Everyone told me to play the Arkham games, and it's finally time to jump in. 2024 doesn't have much coming out that I'm excited about, so I'm trying to check out some of my older recommendations. Soon I hope to play the first Devil May Cry games, so make sure you're subbed and come back for that. This video will be covering both Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, and I thought it would be fun to write the first part of the video after having played only Arkham Asylum. I want to get all my thoughts formed and expressed with no context for comparison to Arkham City, and then I'll play City and finish the video. One of the reasons I put these games off despite years of recommendations is because I'm not a Batman fan. I like some of the movies, but he's pretty low on my list of favorite comic book characters. I'm an X-Men kid, give me a game playing as Colossus or Cyclops or Gambit and I'll be in heaven. I don't follow the DC storylines, and outside of the DC movies over the decades, my biggest exposure to the world comes from Injustice, which I played competitively for about a year over ten years ago. So I know enough to recognize most of the characters, and to be generally interested in the interactions with them here in Arkham Asylum. That was a treat, seeing so many recognizable villains all in one place. I couldn't tell you how comic book accurate they are, or which performances are authentic, but everyone was pretty entertaining. In this video I will not be going into the story, because not caring all that much about Batman, I found myself fairly disinterested in what was going on narratively. When I saw that this game comes from 2009, I was impressed. It still looks really good. Playing in 4K on PC certainly helps, and the art style makes the game hold up well. I like the character models, the environments are well designed, at times gorgeous, the moody lighting is great, the animations… Uh, animations are generally a weak spot of mine, but to me they seem good. Eh, I'm not really a graphics guy, I don't know how to talk about this stuff, it looks good, I like it. The gameplay is where it's at, that's why these games are so recommended to me. As an action fan, as a fan of Ninja Gaiden, Real God of War, Devil May Cry 5, and particularly Sifu, this game was supposedly right up my alley. And I gotta agree, Arkham Asylum's core gameplay regarding combat and stealth was interesting, challenging, satisfying, and surprisingly deep. I'm actually gonna start with the stealth sections. Typically, when I encounter stealth in a game, it's an optional strategy. And it generally is here too, but I was ecstatic to see required stealth sections. There's a few parts where someone is holding hostages, and if anyone spots you, they get executed. You gotta sneak around and take everyone down in the room one by one quietly. This means you can't run up and start attacking someone, or use explosive traps or your gliding kick. It's all too loud. Sometimes you gotta get past all the guards to get to the leader, or maybe you'll need to blow out both walls at the same time to knock everyone out. You can use vents under the floor to sneak around, gargoyles along the walls keep you out of enemy sight and can be used to string up enemies that pass under them. There's usually a lot of options available for passing stealth missions. But you must be stealthy, and I love that. Sometimes after a few enemies have been taken down, guards will be alerted by radio that something is wrong, making the encounter change. Is someone missing? I keep losing count. Joker was right, I found someone! There's also several rooms with enemies that have guns that will kill you fast, so if you run in flailing your fists, you're gonna die. You need to sneak up on them, distract with your sonic batarangs, lay traps, and prioritize these armed enemies in groups before you take on the regular guys. Being forced, or at least strongly incentivized to play stealthy from time to time, really got me into that kind of playstyle, and I started trying to be stealthy outside of these required sections because I discovered how fun it is to play that way. And if you know my channel, you know that this challenge matters philosophy is very important to me. Arkham Asylum makes some respectable attempts. When the combat starts, a whole other system of the game starts to shine, the combo system and free flow combat. But before that, I have to take a moment to discuss difficulty. I played on normal because the warning for hard mode has some intimidating language for a newcomer like myself. It's worded as being for experts, and says that it disables combat signals, which for me were pretty important for learning the flow. However, what I feared would happen did happen. Once I got far enough to be comfortable with combat and stealth, the game started to feel too easy, and I was craving the hard mode difficulty. Sadly, there's no way to switch difficulty mid-game, and I honestly wasn't in the mood to restart the entire game and go through the long, slow walking intro and get all the way back where I was. So I made a decision. 
I said I would try to imagine I was playing on hard mode, hold myself accountable, and try to take little damage in fights and use stealth as intelligently as I could. At that point, I already liked the gameplay a lot. The game did its job of getting me into its systems, so I decided to take over from there. I'm hoping that Arkham City better handles the difficulty settings. So let's talk about the melee combat and the combo system. At first, Asylum feels like a mash fest. You've got one attack button, you're magnetized to enemies, Batman flies around the room attacking with no effort from the player, there are no directional inputs like double tapping forward then attacking, no air launchers, mashing counter attack makes you untouchable in situations where enemies don't have weapons to hit you in alternative ways. It's just punch, punch, and then some heavy hits. Attack in the direction of someone far away, and you'll fly over and hit him. Mash parry, hold R2, and triangle for a takedown, I wasn't impressed. As combat encounters start getting more intense and enemy variety increases, other tools start to feel more important because you're taking so many hits, playing sloppy, that you die. The cape stun greatly helps you focus on the troublesome enemy. The batarang will keep someone from approaching while you're attacking someone else and the ground pound has to be strategically used or you'll get hit during the long animation, which is a great way to balance it since it's an insta-kill on downed enemies and it costs no resources to do. And things really started opening up once I used my XP to unlock the grab and the instant takedown, which are special moves only accessible after landing an 8-hit combo. This is where the real complexity comes from in Asylum's combat, and it felt very natural to experiment with these special moves after unlocking them because they're free. You have this powerful attack to unleash after 8 hits, so why not? The combo system counts your hits and drops the counter if you go a full second without hitting an enemy, but it also punishes you for button mashing because if you swing and miss, you instantly fail the combo. This was a great way to get me to stop mashing under pressure and keep my cool, methodically attacking punch by punch. This also led to far more situational awareness, as I would try to keep enemies in view and plan my next target. Once you enter your third hit of a combo, you enter free flow mode and start flying around the room delivering powerful blows. So if you're mashing and drop the combo, you'll exit this important state that you want to preserve. Once I hit an 8-hit combo, I'd let an instant takedown rip, or go into my invincible throw animation and throw a guy into a crowd, or into a hazard to electrocute him. I was surprised to see how much strategy it requires to keep a combo going, more than in something like God of War, because it's very easy to set yourself up for failure by not controlling yourself. You have to think of enemies as pieces on the board to constantly be interacting with. If you knock someone down and need to get another hit quickly, toss a batarang at someone else. If everyone is knocked down and there's no one to hit, do a ground pound and use the long animation to give the other guys a chance to get up and then grapple one of them and start your offense again. It takes serious work and enemy management to keep combos going, and I loved it. Playing this way naturally leads to a decent amount of attack variety, which also gives you an XP bonus. So it's not that you're thinking, I want the variety bonus so I'll use more variety, it's more that using variety has an immediate tangible benefit in combat because it helps you survive and it's very easy to engage with, and it keeps your combo counter going so you can stay in free flow and use your very helpful special attacks. And then that natural variety you're using is further rewarded with an XP bonus. It's wonderful. Additionally, there are several other systems at play that lead to stronger player education and reinforcement of skills. Destroying Joker teeth around the maps gives you an XP bonus, so you're always getting practice using your battering. Knife guys will savagely attack you and take huge chunks of health, but they can be stunned with the cape to give you an opening to attack them. But here's the key, you don't have to kill them that way. It's simply a weakness that the game tells you about to get you into using another one of your tools. You're not forced to engage the enemy this way. I also really like the shocker enemies because if you just swing at them, their shock rod repels you. So the game tells you about using your dodge move in the direction of the enemy to flip over them, which is a mechanic I didn't know about. Fighting them this way led to that option getting added to my mind's arsenal, so I started using the flip over strategy against other enemies when I thought it would work in my favor on the combat board. When I didn't want to use these enemy specific tactics, I would rack up hits on other enemies to get a special move and then use my special against them. 
This is what we're talking about when we talk about the fun zone. Arkham Asylum's fun zone is all about playing like you're the real Batman. Not just mindlessly swinging your fists, but using all of your tools to control the room and making moment-to-moment -moment strategic decisions to dominate, creating a naturally stylish form of play. And if I'm this impressed by Asylum's combat, I'm very excited to see what Arkham City does to expand on it. Oh, and the camera is generally unproblematic. It's close when walking, pulls back when running, and pulls back further to give you a good view of the combat space, which is usually spacious enough to not run into view-obscuring issues. Usually. There were a few camera problem moments when I ended up in tight spaces, but every camera system has its downsides. I never had anything close to the level of Sifu's camera problems. While I do typically find it annoying to have to be constantly adjusting the camera to keep the action in view, here it was far more tolerable since Batman frequently enters slow motion attacks and long animations like parries, takedowns, grabs, stuff that allows you to adjust the camera without taking away from something else you could be focusing on. And speaking of Sifu, I think that's the only change I'd really like to see in Asylum's combat. More control over specific attacks, directional inputs and stuff, a dedicated way to do a sweep, or a jump kick, or a roundhouse, stuff like that. I feel like I'm just watching Batman do all this cool stuff when I want to be doing it myself. And since it feels like Batman does random attack animations, I never know if he's going to do something fast or slow which started to present problems for me since there's no animation cancelling during the startup frames. I'm not saying the game needs that kind of animation cancelling, I think it flows well without it, but not knowing which attack I'm about to do has led me to getting hit by an incoming enemy fist because it just happened to take twice as long as I was expecting. Beyond this, I don't have much more to say. The boss battles? Eh, not great. Bane and the Titan fights are pretty much the same. I like that you're fighting regular guys while having to deal with Bane. I always enjoy boss fights that incorporate the room-to-room -room combat loop. But yeah, boss fights are not Asylum's strength. There are some good moments of humor. I loved eavesdropping on this conversation here. Joker tells us to kill the bat, we kill the bat. Joker told me to kill my sister once. Did you do it? Hell yeah! Never liked her anyway. You're cold, man. Funny thing, he said the same to me. I told him I didn't even have a sister. He just kept telling me to do it. So I got in my car and ran over the first pick I saw. I really enjoyed the parts where reality started shifting because of the interference by Scarecrow. That was a pleasant surprise. Tilted camera making you feel uneasy, suddenly appearing in Wayne Manor seeing the death of Batman's parents, and these trippy, otherworldly zones where the camera zooms out and suddenly it feels like you're playing a platformer. This made me very happy. I'd love to see a Batman game completely in this camera style. You guys know I prefer fixed or angular cameras over player-controlled camera, so if the entire game were presented like this, I'd like it twice as much. Speaking of platforming, Asylum has an auto-jump system, which I'm usually not a fan of. You just hold X and run towards the ledge and he jumps. But you can actually make mistakes jumping to the wrong area, falling and having to grapple back up, gliding down and missing a platform. So for the limited amount of platforming there is, I think the mechanics work well enough. The weakest part of the experience, for me, was the campaign itself. Actually running around this big place wasn't very interesting to me. I didn't enjoy the Riddler challenges of having to look around for clues, so I generally passed on them, even though they gave me XP. And I absolutely hated the parts where you have to scan rooms in detective mode just so you can follow someone's trail. I found these rooms to be fairly directionless, really easy to wander around without a clue of what to look for. After a while, I just didn't want to play Asylum anymore. It's probably because I'm not into the world of Batman. I got kind of tired of whatever the mission was. I preferred to spend time in the optional challenge modes, trying to get the highest ranking, which taught me a lot about how the game works. After a few days, I decided to stop somewhere around going after Killer Croc, I think. Maybe that's when the campaign gets amazing or whatever, but I'm ready to move on. I think the game is really good, I think the gameplay is smart and fun, I'm just worn out on the campaign. So I'm going to end it here and move on to Arkham City. 
Okay, I just beat Arkham City a few days ago, and I have some thoughts. I didn't 100% it, I haven't done all the side quests and challenges. I found a good number of trophies, but I didn't go out of my way to get them. I gave up halfway through the chase the phone calls and track the signal mission because I got bored, but I did do some side quests, I beat the campaign, and I'm still playing around in the extra modes. I think the fact that I beat the campaign instead of abandoning it says a lot. Arkham City is a far superior title, and I can see why Asylum is generally considered a prototype. City feels much more like the true Batman experience. The freedom to grapple and fly around was instantly appealing, because going into City, I was already mentally prepared to take on the role of Batman. I took long breaks from the missions and just watched over the city, dropping in on bad guys and starting fights in the streets. The city is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not typically one for stopping to take in the sights, but sometimes I just stood around looking at everything. The city is incredibly detailed, with beautiful colors in the sky, and it being such a gorgeous place made me enjoy flying around it even more. I really appreciate the number of cool ways to get through levels. Asylum's world progression lost me after a while, but City has remedied that. Throwing a remote-controlled batarang through electricity and then guiding it to a panel that needs power, making glaciers with ice bombs and then using the grapple to pull yourself across the water, electric charges to open doors, running and sliding under small openings, freezing points of steam that block your path, there's several moments where you come across like four or five obstacles in a row that require your tools to get through, and the flow is really nice. It's a good reminder of all the gear you have if you haven't been using it. I went straight for hard mode this time around, and my god, it's rough. It doesn't take away the parry signals, but the combat is a lot more intense. Enemies are very aggressive, ganging up on you, throwing stuff, taking huge chunks of life for any mistake. Gunners kill you in like two shots and I loved it. I noticed immediately that the game feels faster. Animations have definitely been sped up. More enemies come at you, two or even three attacking at once, which leads to cool multi-enemy takedowns. The expansion of Batman's tools was a revelation. I absolutely love the electricity gun and the freeze gun. I don't remember if you could use the grapple to rip guns out of enemies' hands in Asylum, but I'm definitely using that a lot in City. And the new special moves earned with the combo counter are so badass. I frequently used the Bat Swarm Stun Circle, and used it as an opportunity to grapple someone in and knock them on their ass. The insta-kill aerial bombardment is ridiculously good, and drove me to get multiple enemies on the ground at once. I got a lot of use out of the ability to break enemy weapons, so I didn't have to deal with stun batons. I definitely tried to target the shield guys, because they were really pissing me off. Fights can now be initiated with a dive bomb shockwave attack, making for a dramatic entrance to a room. All new takedown options expand your approach to stealth sections, and it was nice to see the inclusion of a quick takedown option at the exchange of making noise. Batman feels so much more complete this time around, I don't know how anyone can go back to Asylum after this. The enemy variety is fantastic. You've got the big guys that have to be stunned first, knife guys that can be dodged by holding back and avoid, but can be automatically taken down if you time multiple avoids correctly. The aforementioned shield guys can be stunned and then jumped over, and while I do think it's unfortunate that you can't electrocute them into a grapple pull, you do at least have the weapon break ability to rip their shield away and take it off the board and the freeze bomb sets him up for an insta-kill, which was a lovely late-game addition. 
Ninja ladies introduce quick reaction attacks as well as serving as great opportunities to use the new blade takedown ability. Stealth sections are more dynamic and challenging, seeing more enemies with guns who I think are better at dodging long distance projectiles now. Guys walking around carrying signal jammers so you can't use your predator vision, and even the occasional guy with thermal goggles to spot you hiding up on the gargoyles. Arkham City really leans into the smart combat design of enemies that show off specific mechanics, while still offering other ways to dispose of them so you don't get boxed into a formula. And the addition of so many new abilities makes this twice as fun as it was in Asylum. This game also got me to pay attention to the free flow system a lot more. I started taking great advantage of being able to fly from one opponent to the next while I'm moving the camera, realizing that all these hits will knock opponents down, so I would be very careful not to hit attack more than once per enemy, to preserve my combo. And now combos don't just grant special moves, hitting a 12x multiplier enters focus mode, making you move faster, do more damage, and giving more timing freedom. It's fun, but I think it was kind of an unnecessary addition, because it turns combat into something a lot less thoughtful. Though it is an interesting choice between preserving focus mode or using a special ability which takes you out of it. I also loved the free flow gadget upgrade, which makes all your gadgets do insanely powerful stuff when in focus mode, like a triple batarang, massive freeze blast, and my favorite, the chaining electric charge. Oh man, this is good stuff. What's also interesting about the enemies is that some of them are placed on the board to stop the mindless use of free flow combat, because if you just fly around targeting whoever, you'll end up punching a big guy that doesn't take damage unless he's stunned, or a shield guy. Both of them will instantly kill your combo meter if punched. I think my favorite addition is the beatdown attack after using stun. Stunning an enemy gives you a couple seconds of free button mashing release, and you unleash a flurry of punches into a huge uppercut or headbutt or something. It was fun to mix this in and get in a few punches before having to defend myself. I can use the beatdown to quickly rack up hits and trigger special attacks, and some of my favorite combat moments came from the multitasking involved in stunning someone, taking out the approaching enemies with freeze or electricity, and continuing the beatdown once I'm in the clear. The combat is so good I spent a lot of my time just running around looking for fights, and it was nice to see the campaign also present many challenging encounters against large diverse groups of enemies, constantly shaking things up. The one-armed sword and hammer dudes are particularly cool because you can shock them and they spin around hitting everyone. Dealing with rooms packed with shooting enemies were uniquely intense and led to so many different ideas. Grabbing one guy from a ledge, using the grapple to rip a gun from someone's hands, using the freeze gun to freeze someone in place, battering to knock someone down into a ground pound, electric gun to stun and then putting them on the ground, even using the disruptor to disable the technology in their guns so they can't fire for a short period of time. Creating fun strategies from my options was exciting, and failing multiple times in a room got me to experiment more and master my abilities. And holy shit, Catwoman! She's awesome! Catwoman was my main in Injustice, that's when I started to like her, and she actually feels just like she did in that game. I loved playing as her, she feels appropriately unique, but still plays under the same rules as Batman. I would definitely play an entire spin-off game focused on her, cause I felt like I didn't get to spend enough time with her in the campaign. As of writing the script, I haven't played with Robin or Nightwing yet, but I'm planning to experiment later. So you can see that I really like the combat and creative expression in Arkham City. I like the stealth sections, I love dealing with multiple enemies in big fights, disabling firearms, hopping over shields, choosing between special attacks, targeting weapons to break, it's good fun. But there are a few things that really start to nag at me as I play. The first being these goddamn notifications that keep popping up telling me about challenges and ways to beat certain enemies. Maybe the PC version is bugged or something because people tell me they didn't have this experience. These things are a constant annoyance for me because they're right dead center on the screen. I've been hit so many times by enemies I can't focus on because they're behind big white text. I've turned off hints in the menu, I've disabled tutorials in the skill tree, but I keep getting told about this stuff as I'm fighting. I keep getting told how to dodge knife guys, or to stun and jump over the shield guy, and it's enough already! 
This hint about the blade takedown was on screen for almost this entire section, even though I'd already successfully done it. Just look at how much real estate is taken up by these stupid remote electrical charge notifications. Just move it, man. Put it up here and it'll be fine. Look at this blade takedown notification stuck on the top and then a Riddler challenge notification appears under it. What were they thinking? And this whole stun jump over takedown? Whoever made that the same input as hopping over needs to be whipped. Because hopping over enemies is a very useful strategy, and when you stun people, now you cannot hop over in that direction because you'll go into the takedown animation, and you'll get hit out of it because it doesn't have iframes. Incredibly frustrating. You should have to hit attack in the air or something to trigger the takedown, because I hate losing my jump opportunity just because I stunned someone. I'm also getting real tired of these slow motion cinematic finishers. They happen every time you take out the last guy of a fight, so that means they happen a lot. And yeah, fine, it can be cool at the end of a big fight, but even if you're fighting just three dudes, it ends in this dramatic slow-mo attack that just doesn't fit the moment after 15 seconds of fighting. On top of that, the camera bugs out at least 50% of the time, completely ruining the moment. You can't even see what's happening half the time, and I just started rolling my eyes at it. Now, the story. Uh, I don't know, man. Doctor Strange is doing something. Two faces here for five seconds. Something about Simon Grundy and Batman's in love with Talia Razgul. Joker poisons Batman and he's gotta get a sample of demon blood. Come on, man. I don't get this stuff. I thought it was goofy and I couldn't get into it. I don't know how to say what's good or bad here, I just liked running around as Batman. I found the ending to be incredibly underwhelming, because I don't know who Clayface is, the reveal meant nothing to me, and the boss fight wasn't very fun apart from seeing Batman with a sword. When it was all over, I just said, oh, that's it? Okay. The boss fights are mixed, Clayface and Rasha Ghoul were more annoying than fun, Grundy was kind of fun, it got me into using the mines, which I still kind of struggle to use effectively, but my god are they powerful when combined with the aerial takedown. While most of the bosses didn't really do it for me, I did find the actual character interactions with the villains to be more interesting this time around, especially Mr. Freeze. I'm curious what people think about the Mr. Freeze boss fight. I think it's cool that you have to find different ways to take him down, but I definitely needed some help. I got him with a stealth takedown, the magnet trap, the exploding wall, disabling his gun, glide attack, but after that I needed to look up a guide for more options. I felt dumb for not thinking of the grate in the floor, and I never noticed the water pool for electrocution. I probably would have been here way too long and gotten frustrated if I hadn't looked stuff up. It's interesting that the required number of takedowns on him depends on the difficulty level, and there's a big difference between 5 on normal and 8 on hard. Did you like this fight? I'm mixed on it. It was creative, a bit too much for me, but I think that was because I was playing on hard for my first playthrough. If I'd played this on normal first and then had a second playthrough on hard, I would have been a smarter player and probably would have figured out all 8 on my own, I'd like to think. I want to thank everyone for recommending these games to me, and especially to a very special viewer who was kind enough to gift me the trilogy. Thank you so much. Who knows when I would have gotten around to this otherwise. I have not opened Arkham Knight yet. I'm going to take a Batman break before I dive in. So maybe I'll do another video later. Bye.